Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you again so much for our time together. It's a beautiful Monday morning. God is going to bless all the work of your hands this week. Revival Nights at Main Campus this week. We're looking forward to you being with us. But right now, I want us to come back to John chapter 11, and I especially want to talk to leaders. There are many leaders who are deluded. You say, what? Yeah, they're deluded. They're deluded by pride or they're deluded by, I don't know, naivety to think that everybody around them loves them. It's like somebody walked up to me one day and said, Pastor Summer, you know this person? They've been in our church for years. They hate you. I said, oh yeah, they're here every Sunday. When they told me one time they hate me. And I said, well, I'll still preach your funeral and still love you. But many pastors are deluded. Many connect group leaders are deluded in the thinking that everybody loves you as a leader. Another group of leaders are, are so wounded by betrayal and so wounded by the hard words that people say against them that they withdraw from God's wonderful people and, you know, they want to live very isolated. They just, they just don't want to be hurt again. Rather than heal, they, they just don't want to be hurt again. And, you know, I tell young leaders like that, you know, you can't love and not be vulnerable. You're, if you love people, you're going to get hurt. Don't, don't, don't blame the whole body of Christ because, as Paul would say, one pimple person burst on you. We need to face some reality. Now, I want you to notice here in John chapter 11 the kind of people that were around Jesus. Let's start reading with verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told him what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is this man performing miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. And they, they really begin to work in earnest on their plot to kill him. But I want you to notice, there were people around Jesus who were only there to spy. There were people around Jesus who were only there to gather information and go back and tell their enemies, to gather dirt on Jesus, so to speak. Now, one of the things you need to learn as a leader is that there are people around you who are not there because they love you and they're not there because they love the work of God. They're there because, forgive me, they want to dig up some dirt on you. They, they want to hurt the work of God. It has always been like that. It will always be like that. It has nothing to do with your leadership. Jesus was a perfect leader. Now, if you go on to chapter 12, then you find Jesus had a friend around him by the name of Judas, who was the treasurer. And Judas, if you look at verses 4 to 6, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. That there are people around you that claim to be your friends and claim to be a part of you, but forgive me, their envy is so strong in them that they object to any blessing that God gives to you. They don't understand the blessings that God gives to you as a leader. And forgive me, they just get hostile toward you about it because it's the envy in their own heart. Now, if we're going to apply this to our lives, what I would tell you is never withdraw from God's wonderful people. They're wonderful people. Don't, don't, don't get fixated on the few bad apples that rise up and hurt you but neither allow the bad people to change you. They, these people around Jesus who came to spy on him and who objected to his blessings didn't change his love, didn't change his decisions. Whoa, didn't change his decision. Well, you know, I don't want to offend Judas, so I guess I won't accept this beautiful gift the Father gave me. No, it didn't change his love, didn't affect his decisions, didn't affect his openness. It did not change who he was. Do not let people change you. Their attitudes are their problems. 